A few months ago, I bought a 2012 Caprice PPV or police patrol vehicle. It was used by a Florida police department and it looked to be in great shape with only 82,000 miles. The thing is, mileage on a police car doesn't exactly tell you the full story. You see, police cars idle and they idle a lot and mine had accumulated over 8,300 hours of just idle time. Now, most people don't pay attention to idle hours, but to put that into context, one hour of idling is equivalent to about 33 miles of driving. So in other words, the Caprice had accumulated the equivalent of 275,000 additional miles of wear to the engine outside of the 82,000 miles that it was driven, undoubtedly very hard. Idling isn't particularly good for an engine either, and it also burns a decent amount of fuel. I accidentally left this engine running for a day. It's super quiet, and I was moving my entire fleet around and forgot. Seriously, this happened, but I used the mistake to calculate that I burned three quarters of a gallon of fuel per hour. That means this six liter LS engine burned about 6,300 gallons of fuel just during the time it was idling away. Pretty crazy. Since I'll be upgrading the camshaft, deleting the troublesome displacement on demand, installing a high stall speed torque converter and long tube headers, I decided to drop the engine, transmission, and entire front subframe out of the bottom to give me much better access to everything and to be able to show you guys the guts of of this engine clearly and with good lighting. Now, I don't know too much on the repair and maintenance history of the Caprice, but I'd be blown away if the cam and the lifters are original. These engines had a big problem with the lifters eating the cam alive because of displacement on demand, but everything else could totally be original because after all, this thing's a legendary LS. We have a few legends in the house today. My 1000 horsepower turbo Trans Am, my daily driver 05 Escalade with 170,000 miles, and this, a family member's 99 Buick Regal GS. This thing is awesome. A couple years ago, I installed a ported blower, a smaller supercharger pulley, exhaust, injectors, and intake, a tune. It has over 300 horsepower and close to 200,000 original miles. But I'm not gonna lie, we use a really good synthetic engine oil on this. So just like the Escalade, I'm using the Avalon Smart Change six quart box. This is a Chevron product, really good quality oil. And this is seriously the best value in town. You cannot beat the price. I'll leave a link down below. It's sold exclusively at Walmart. So you can just walk right in and buy it, or you can go to walmart.com and simply order it up online. So this box uses 70% less plastic than traditional packaging. It's 100% recyclable. You get a cool pop out handle right here. Push this in for your sight glass. And then here is the easy port snout, just like that. And you're off to the races. So nothing's really changed here, but the packaging, you still get the same great quality oil you'd expect. And you can store your old engine oil in the box as well. Now I bought the three pack, it's an even better deal. So you better believe when I'm done with the engine work and the Caprice, I'm filling her up with this stuff. So a big thanks to Haviland for continuing to support automotive content creators like myself. Now let's rip apart this LS engine and see what's inside. Oh, and in case you're wondering, from the Caprice driving into the garage to what you see right here only took me about four hours, and I think this is gonna save us a ton of time. I love modern day production line vehicles. You can tell they were just dropping these bodies right onto these completed power units, and now we get to walk around this entire thing, take it apart very quickly, not have to fight in cramped spaces, and all it is is one AC line, a steering shaft connection there, two heater hose connections, and even the engine wiring harness stays with the engine and just disconnects with these massive connectors. Uh, you have to disconnect the very top of the strut, a brake hose, and that's pretty much about it. So in my opinion, this is the only way to do it if you're doing a camshaft, the DOD delete, headers, we can get these manifolds off in like five minutes now. The torque converter, we can get all the way around the transmission. Anyway, this is gonna be a blast. I have my table set up. We have little baggies, a marker. We're gonna organize all the bolts. So without further ado, Let's start ripping and tearing. Every once in a while, the boot just melts to the plug and you destroy the spark plug wires. No big deal. I tried the old twisty trick and it didn't work. Um, but this actually excites me because 
These are AC Delco spark plugs. They could very well be original, which means there's a possibility nothing's been touched inside of this engine. All right, intake manifold is off, so we can take a look at our intake valves. Now, this engine is not direct injected, so we are expecting these to be fairly clean if they used good quality fuel and whatnot. And yeah, this looks pretty nice. Really nice, actually. Uh, this is the VLOM or VLOM or VLOM, however you want to say it. Uh, and this is what controls the displacement on demand. So we're going to take a look at how that works here in a moment. And yeah, overall, these intake valves are looking pretty awesome. So before we take the cylinder heads off, well, let's rip off these exhaust manifolds and hope we don't break any studs. All right, it's the next day, and I actually got a hold of a couple of the shops that maintain this Caprice in Florida, and I can't find any history at all of any internal engine work. And to be honest, this makes perfect sense to me after taking apart a lot of the engine because I've realized that if anything made of rubber has basically just melted itself to the engine, I don't see any sign that anything's ever been taken apart. You saw the spark plug wire boot was frozen to the spark plug. The valve covers I had to pry off with a big screwdriver because the rubber gasket was just kind of melted and stuck to the head. So for an engine that's been idling forever in the Florida heat with the AC on, it seems like everything has just kind of molded itself together. But we had no leaks of any sort. And I did see in the history that they changed the oil a lot. And you can tell by looking at these cylinder walls that this thing has been very maintained, at least with oil changes. Take a look at the cross hatching right here. And the pistons look very, very clean. Look at this, just a little bit of carbon. These are gonna clean up really nicely. And it's more of the same on this side as well. So this engine overall so far is just in excellent, excellent condition. There's no sludge or buildup whatsoever. And take a look at these cylinder heads. This is what you want your valves to look like, especially after so many miles, so many running hours. These things are perfect. Not a lot of carbon buildup. These are gonna clean up very nicely as well. And if we zoom in, we can see the exhaust valves in there and very nice and clean. There hasn't been any oil dripping on these exhaust valves. Look at that. And I've let this thing sit for over a month. You fire it up and no smoke out of the exhaust at all. We have to take apart the front end accessories, uh, what's left of them and the front timing cover. We got to get these lifters out of here. It's got some really funky looking displacement on demand. Lifters, it kills four cylinders when basically you're cruising on the highway uh, or very light load situations. And that has been the problem child of these engines. So anyway, let's get this all apart and let's pull this cam out.
The camshaft and the lifters are out and I will be replacing the oil pump, the timing chain, the guides and a bunch of other stuff. I have to get this engine on a stand. We obviously have to remove the transmission to do the torque converter anyway. Uh, so I'll get it on a stand, flip it upside down. I'll be able to access everything very easily, replace the gasket nicely, make sure it's all sealed up. And here is my organized mess. <laughs> I got a little bit of cleaning to do, but here is the camshaft and the lifters. And all I have to say is long live the LS engine. Even one of the most problematic, which I would say basically is any LS with displacement on demand. Other than that, they're very, very solid engines. Uh, but even this one, is in excellent, excellent condition. So I know that the Tahoes and the Suburbans and all the trucks that had uh, the displacement on demand issue starting in 07, it was typically the earlier ones. And then at some point they revised some parts and sort of fixed it. But this Caprice being a 2012, you'd think it'd be fixed by now, but a lot of Caprice guys have DOD issues and end up having to either delete the whole system, replace the cam and lifters, and it can be a big mess. And honestly, for what? You get maybe one or two miles per gallon better on the highway. I do not think it's worth it. That's why everybody deletes it, which is what I'm gonna be doing. But take a look at this camshaft. Normally when you have issues, these are kind of flattened, the peak of the lobe here. And you can see that these are in excellent, excellent condition. I don't see even one lobe that has any questionable marks on them at all. This cam is almost perfect. And so are the lifters. Although I did notice some wear right here on the sides, right here. So it wasn't really causing any issues, um, but you can definitely see that it's on a few of them. And here are the weird DOD lifters. So these are capable of internally collapsing, which means the valves aren't gonna do anything. And then the ECU shuts off fuel and spark. So you're able to run on four of eight cylinders and supposedly save a little bit of fuel. Um, but these are the other lifters. They look really nice. A little bit of wear on that guy. And there were a couple over here. You can see little lines here. You can't feel it though. That's really nothing. I'd say the cam and lifters are perfect. Uh, the engine was very quiet as well. And let's take a look at the v -lome. So the ECU controls four solenoids here and these control oil pressure and that's how those lifters collapse. Uh, this thing fails also. And sometimes you can get away with just replacing this and it'll fix the issue. But uh, you can have leaks in here. The solenoids can go bad. Uh, many, many different issues with DOD, although some of this stuff did get better uh, as time progressed. But something else I wanted to show you guys is the intake manifold on this car has basically nothing inside of it, which is what you want. I mean, there's really not much oil at all. So the PCV system apparently works really well on this engine. I don't see any real need for a catch can, uh, especially stock on these. So overall, just fantastic. Cam and lifters are in great shape. The intake doesn't have any oil. Our pistons and our cylinder walls look almost brand new and the engine had no leaks whatsoever. It was bone dry. Everything came apart really nicely because it was a Florida car. So no Chicago rust like I'm used to. And so far we are off to a very, very good start to this project. And of course, in the future episodes, we have a ton of performance parts to install. So we have a Circle D triple disc 3800 stall speed torque converter that is going to make this thing launch like a bat out of hell. We have speed engineering long tube headers and this guy, so excited for this camshaft. It's from England Green. These guys are fantastic. Some of the nicest guys I've ever dealt with. Uh, and this is their best naturally aspirated camshaft for this. It sounds so good. I can't wait to fire it up. Uh, we have a bunch of stuff from Brian Tooley Racing, uh, like double valve springs, some hardened push rods, uh, and all the gaskets, head gaskets, everything that goes along with a project like this. And of course, when you're doing a project like this, the list just keeps on getting bigger. So we have to get some spark plug wires now, a few other miscellaneous gaskets. So I'll have to make some dealership runs. No big deal. But yeah, overall, super excited about this project. This cop car is going to sound mean. All right, that'll do it for today's video. I hope you guys really enjoyed this one. If you did, don't forget, hit the thumbs up button, share the video, subscribe if you're new, check out the future videos on the Caprice. They're gonna be phenomenal. And most importantly, have a fantastic day. I'll catch all of you in the next video.